If you or someone you know has ever had any bit of personal property stolen, be it a camera out of the backseat of the car or maybe a backpack at a public event, you know that the odds of recovering your lost property are pretty much less than 1%. This is the story of how my Zone 92 DJ mixer that was stolen out of the backseat of my car in my apartment complex was successfully recovered. This all started about six weeks ago when a group of three people broke into my apartment's parking garage through the emergency exit. They cased all the cars and they ended up finding uh, my car last and smashed the window grabbed my mixer out of the back and hightailed it out of there. This was one of those days where I came home after a long gig at like 4 a.m. I already carried up two cases of CDJs into my apartment and I just didn't wanna head back down and get that uh, last case for the Zone 92. Anyways, I came back downstairs uh, the next morning to go to my next show and noticed that something was horribly wrong. I immediately called in to file a police report and started making up flyers to hand out to all of the local pawn shops with the serial number and the police case number, all that valuable information. And as I expected, the cops really didn't care anything about what had happened. I thought it might be a little bit different because they broke into an apartment to get to the garage, but they said, uh, it's not really a big deal to us. You're gonna be on your own pretty much. In fact, the last thing I remember the cops saying to me on the phone was, well, if you hear anything else, give us a call. Like, isn't, isn't that your job? You're the one who's supposed to be informing me about what you find out, right? I had pretty much given up on finding it after about week three. Then one day I got a Facebook message from a YouTube subscriber of mine who lives in the area and said that he had found my mixer. I couldn't believe it until he had sent me the link to the ad on the OfferUp website, which I guess turns out is pretty much a place where you can sell all of your stolen shit. Even better yet, he had taken note of the serial number of the mixer that this guy tried to sell to him and compared it to the video that I uploaded on my YouTube channel earlier, and it was the same exact mixer. All right, so at this point, I am going into game plan mode, right? I'm trying to figure out how do I let this guy know that I'm interested in buying this mixer without letting him know that I am the guy that originally owned the mixer. I ended up making a fake offer up account and started messaging this guy, trying to kind of bait him into meeting me up in Renton, um, a few blocks away from where he stole it and uh, get it back or involve the police in some way. I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna do. It was at this point that everything started happening really, really fast. I was on the phone with the detective that was originally in charge of the case, which I guess for some reason they decided to close the case, even though it was only six weeks ago and nothing, no new information had been had. So I had to reopen the case with them, let them know that I had found this guy and let them know that I was baiting them into meeting me. I really didn't think that this guy would take the bait so fast, especially after the conversation that he had with my friend who tipped me off about the mixer. But I guess he was really, really eager to get rid of this gear and get a little cash in his pocket. You no, know, the usual statistic is about 12 minutes for a police response in a case of an emergency. Well, I can tell you by experience now that if you do not have an emergency and you're trying to get the police to help you with something, you better have a whole hour to wait. My roommate Madison was kind enough to tag along with me while I was keeping them on the line, trying to just tell them that, oh, I'm, I'm just up the road, I'm running a little late, traffic is awful, while we were waiting for these police to show up after an hour. If this guy doesn't show up, we should do a drive by. Not a, not a, not a, like, <laughs> drive by, but we should drive by the Fry's parking lot. I say we go to Home Depot, pick get up a nail gun. Shit. We've been waiting here in this parking lot for how long? 30? No, 20 minutes. Nah, I'd 15? Say like 20 to 15, 20 to 30. Because we, uh, we left the house at. This, this is seriously going to ruin it. This is, We're gonna it's lose over. the bad guy. The bad guy's gonna get away because the RPD doesn't want to get off their desk and meet us down here in an adequate time. Response time. Yeah. I almost started to feel bad for the thieves because they were like sitting in this parking lot doing nothing for an hour. And just as an aside, I didn't want these guys to get in trouble. I, I didn't want anybody to get arrested over this. I just wanted my shit back. All right. Say that he, say that you're in a uh, oh, for black up. and white. <laughs> I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in a, I'm in a Ford Explorer. Ford Tahoe. Or, yeah, <laughs> I'm in a black and white Ford Tahoe. I don't know his last name. I don't know his first name. All I have is a grainy image of him wearing Jordans, oh. breaking into my fucking car. Well, that's good enough. 
Good enough for Tinder, good enough for yeah. <laughs> Oh man. The boys in blue. Coming through. My fucking boys. Today I'm glad to pay my taxes because some shit actually worked out for fucking ones. And these guys had parked like in a super sketchy part of the parking lot. There was like these two big box trucks uh, on either side of them so that the cameras from the store couldn't see what was going on. And uh, the police had, you know, pinned them into that little spot and started investigating what was going on. So right after the police pulled up, uh, we pulled up right behind them and I saw them take the, the mixer out of the car. And it's like one of those things, this, the instant you see it, you're like, yes, that, that is it, that is the one, that is 100% my piece of equipment. One of the cops comes up to me and says, well, uh, we have a mixer here and it looks like the serial number has been scratched off. And I'm thinking, we got him, that's it. Scratched off serial number, obviously stolen shit, I'm gonna be getting my mixer back. But he goes on to say, because it's scratched off, we cannot confirm that this is your mixer. What I've just learned is that you can steal anything you want, and as long as you scratch the serial number off, you're good to go. And you can't prove it that it was someone else's before you yeah, had it? That's what I've discovered. They better give it back to me, dude. I swear to God. I'm gonna be beyond pissed if he doesn't give it well, back to me. These guys know where to go get it again. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look. Is there anything special about the case? Uh, so it was missing a little like lid cover on the front. This is 100% not even bullshitting you, it. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And there's the scratches. I see them. And the shitty fucking brown white. Mm-hmm. Because it's old as fuck and the last owner smoked around it all the fucking time. Yep. So. It's all yours, man. It's all mine? Do we have, um, do we have your information? Fucking got it. Got him. <laughs> Hey, is that your mixer? I think this is my fucking mixer. Shout out to uh, idiots. Shout out to idiots. Got him. And that was pretty much it. This whole time, these uh, the guys that were sitting in the car were just like sitting there, staring down at their phones, like wondering what was going to happen. I got my mixer back. None of them got arrested. I think that was a pretty good uh, ending to this story. And the best part of the story is now that I got two zones. I have two zones.